Hello everyone, I'm Daniela and I'm the manager of Little Linguist Nursery in Stratton. Today I'm doing a quick video about biting, especially in nursery. Um, unfortunately, this behaviour tends to happen around the age of two. Um, and I'm going to explore some of the reasons why it happens and how we deal with it in nursery. Um, maybe you're watching this video because your little one has bitten and you're curious to find out a bit more about why this is happening. Or you may be watching it as unfortunately your child has been bitten by another child. Um, children bite for a lot of different reasons and there isn't really a one size fits all for why it might be happening. Um, but we'll just explore some of the reasons and some of the things we can do to potentially stop or reduce the number of times a child might be biting. So the first time a child bites, you might realise your child is teething. So this sometimes happens in the baby room. Sometimes children are biting themselves or biting resources um, or putting all different toys in their mouth. Um, it might be that their teeth are causing them pain or discomfort and they're trying to find some way of alleviating that discomfort. So um, this is some, sometimes one of the first reasons why we might see a child bite. Um, what do you do about this? So um, some typical things you can do is obviously teething toys. Um, it's always great if you put them in the freezer because obviously that can help with the discomfort if they're teething. Um, and also I've heard that you could use a cold wet flannel. So you could wet a flannel and put that in the fridge or the freezer as well. Um, you could also try some teething gels and um, I've been told and I've also used myself as a parent um, that the amber bracelets are quite useful for babies when they're teething. I'm not sure how it works, but it's worth a try. Um, so that might be some common ways to try and alleviate teething biting. Um, not all of these things would work with every single child and biting is not always caused by teething. So on to the next reason or possible reason why a child could be biting. It could be exploration. So it's just something to try. Um, sometimes um, a child might try and bite a parent or a sibling or items that you just think that's not for eating. Um, with that, it's not normally such a big concern because it might not be as frequent. Um, when we start to get concerned in the nursery is if a child is repeatedly biting. Um, and then at the end of this video, I'll go through the kind of things that we try. But yeah, exploration is a reason where a child might be biting as well. Just um, as they explore with different um, textures. A lot of babies try to explore items around the house, as I'm sure all you parents are aware, with their mouth. So sometimes it is just purely about exploration. Um, another possible reason for biting is cause and effect. So sometimes um, if you give your child a very big reaction when they bite, uh, they might like that and then do it again for that reaction. Um, it's always best to try and stay calm if your child bites. And if they have bitten another child, try to pay more attention to the victim. So the child that has been bitten, um, it's better if you lavish them with attention. Um, and so that child knows that they're not gonna get um, all the attention if they bite, all the attention is going to go on the other child that has been bitten. If you think of um, young babies, uh, sometimes they, well, they might throw their food on the floor or they like dropping their spoon on the floor. And that is also a bit of cause and effect. So with biting, sometimes it's just literally, let me see what happens if I bite this 
or if I bite this person or if I bite this toy. So be careful of how you react um, because sometimes they do like the big reaction um, and do it again to get that. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons. Another reason why sometimes children bite is possibly imitation. They might have seen in the nursery another child bite or been bitten, unfortunately, by another child. Um, and that can be a possible reason why they try to bite themselves. Um, it's not always, I, I don't think it's one of the main reasons, but that's also a possible cue. So has your child seen someone else biting or have they possibly been bitten? One of the biggest reasons that we see for biting in the nursery is attention. So is the child bored? Is there enough activities out for the child that are stimulating and age appropriate? Um, or are they struggling with transitions? Um, are they having to wait before their next activity? Um, so sometimes you have to look at uh, what's happening at the time that they bite. You have to kind of rewind a bit and think what happened first? Um, is it possibly doing it for attention? Um, is it like that? they know that they're going to get a reaction, so they bite, so then all the attention's on them. Biting is um, also sometimes brought on by a child wanting to be more independent. Um, we in the past have had um, children that are around 18 months possibly start biting um, as a way of showing their independence, possibly showing that they want to move to the next room or have more challenging activities. Um, challenge, uh, biting is a powerful way of getting attention, but also showing their um, independence or what they want. You know, um, it might be that they are displaying that they their needs aren't being met. Um, parents are all often concerned um, if they find out that their child has bitten or obviously been bitten. Um, but toddlers, um, children under five, do often use it as a quick fix for situations. It could be that a child has a toy that they want or a child tried to take a toy that they want. They could be intimidated or it might just be that this is the way that they feel they're going to get what they want quickly. Um, so, yes, yeah, so for us, we luckily have nursery cam in our nursery. And if a bite has happened and we want to try and find out a bit more about what happened first, we do sometimes just go back and look at the camera um, and see what happened in the five minutes before that, that led up to that bite. And sometimes that's really useful at finding out how to avoid future bites. Um, and yeah, it can sometimes be about resources. So when t children are struggling with sharing resources, it might mean that we have to have more than one of a resource, a popular resource in the room, or that we limit the number of children playing with the resource that's popular so that there's um, more staff available to pay attention to those children while they're playing with that. Um, and then there's also frustration. So sometimes children are biting out of not being the, the sheer fact that they can't communicate their needs. Um, we often get concerned if a child can communicate their needs and is biting, but the majority of bites, I'd say, happen around the toddler age group where they might not have the words to be able to express how they're feeling. Um, so they bite instead. Um, and it's kind of like their way of communicating. Often, as I said before, it's about sharing um, resources, but there can be other reasons um, which might need to be looked into further with a health visitor or a doctor. Um, but I, normally we take biting very seriously in the nursery. Um, if a child has been bitten um, or bites, sorry, three times, um, we would then have a meeting with the child's parents to try and establish what's going on. 
um, the room leader and the manager would all kind of have a look at the evidence of the bites and what's happened before them, what's happened after it, and try to set some, yeah, sometimes we have a meeting to try and discuss what might possibly be going on with the little one and set some targets for everyone to follow. So it's really important that parents and the nursery work together and follow similar um, strategies in the nursery and at home. And lastly, um, another reason why children bite is because they're stressed. Um, now you might think, how can a little five-year-old or three-year-old or two-year-old feel stressed? But they do. And sometimes children pick up on what's going on at home as well. So is it possible that you're, you've moved house, you've started a new job? If their parents are stressed, um, sometimes that will come out in nursery. And you might think, oh, well, uh, yeah, th that happened a few weeks ago. Why would they start biting now? Sometimes it takes a, t a, a while for children to kind of put together what's actually happened. And then sometimes unwanted behavior happens in the nursery. It's not always biting, but biting is kind of like a common sign that maybe something's not going right for the little one. Um, and I, I've discussed lots of possible other reasons before we start thinking about stress, um, but that can be a potential reason why children bite. Um, and then when we have possible meetings with parents, this is where we can kind of discuss those things and see what we can put in place to help the little one pass how they're feeling. So these are some of the typical reasons why children are biting, but um, we can't give a one size fits all. Um, if your child is biting, it's always good to kind of try to think about what's happening before the bite happens. Um, and it, it, you might start to see a pattern and then you can try to put things in place. Finding out what happened first is probably one of the um, initial, the first things you need to do to try and make the behavior stop. So trying to analyze what happened, who was in the room, uh, how was the child feeling? Was the t child tired? Was they hungry? You can sometimes see trigger points. So you might notice a child's always biting just before they go to sleep or just before they eat. Um, and then when you start to see those patterns, you can try to put things in place to stop or prevent bites if you can see a pattern. If the child is pre-verbal, then you have to try and think outside the box. Um, how can I try to put some activities out or what can I do to entertain this child to prevent this happening again in the nursery? we try to always make sure that we have multiple activities set up. So if a child doesn't want to take part in a specific activity, there's always something else that they can get involved in um, rather than potentially go and um, start doing unwanted behaviour. At home, it might be that your child has bitten a sibling or they're biting you or another parent. Um, and you might need to think about um, what kind of tools can I try and use to stop this happening again. So think about activities that your child really enjoys, try to have those out and ready and available um, as a distraction. So for example, if you notice your child's always biting when they come home after a long day and they're possibly tired, you're there cooking or getting things ready for the next day. Um, what's an activity that your child really likes that they could get involved in before that behavior comes? What else can we do um, about biting? Um, lastly, is to try and teach new behaviours. So you can use books. There's lots of fantastic books on Amazon. Um, there's also some that I've seen on YouTube as well um, to encourage children to know that teeth are not for biting. That's one of them. <laughs> um, and um, we've also obviously discussed the things that you can do for the different reasons that they might be biting. Um, but ultimately, if a child bites, um, you want to try and teach them what's another way 
to deal with that situation instead of biting. So if it is oversharing and they've bitten one of their friends, it's good to go and get down to their level and speak to them about what happened and maybe introduce another possible way that they could have dealt with that situation. Like for example, asking for a, a help from an adult. Um, it's also really important that we remember the children's age, they're only little. Um, sometimes parents um, who their child has been bitten become very angry towards the other child. We don't ever reveal who the other child is um, for that reason, mainly. We don't want parents attacking other parents um, and about a bite. The children possibly don't even remember it by the time the end of the sessions happen. We, we deal with it in the setting. Um, if a child's a bit older, then yeah, you might want to speak to them about what happened at home. But um, yeah, remember their age, it's the behaviour that's unwanted and not the child. Um, we don't like biting, biting's not nice, it hurts. Biting, obviously there's always two people involved in a bite um, and parents who their child has bitten are often upset by their child's behaviour as well. We never blame the parents um, for the behaviour, um, but we do try and work with parents to try and obviously put things in place so that it doesn't happen again. Um, but sometimes parents do obviously feel embarrassed or uncomfortable when they've been told their child has bitten and we're never saying that you're not good parents because your child has bitten, but we do obviously have to make you aware um, that they've hurt another child. Parents of the children that may have been bitten, we always try to offer you lots of support. We give your child first aid um, and we not normally give you a biting policy as well. So you can, if it's the first time that you've possibly, your child's experienced this, we want you to try and understand why this has happened as well. We take it very seriously and it's gonna be discussed with the other parent. So I hope this video has given you a little bit more insight into why toddlers bite um, and some of the things that we try to implement in nursery and we hope that this can potentially help some parents at home um, to deal with their children that have bitten or possibly give a bit more information to parents that their child has been bitten. Um, I do hope you enjoyed listening and please like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to find out more things about what happens in nurseries. So I'm Daniela at Little Linguist Nursery and have a good day.